we're going to work in the garden today and do a few little things. Now, none of the stuff that I'm sharing with you today is new. Um, the moss I've used before, it's an open bag. I use it and take my photo ops and carefully put it back in there for I can reuse it because it gets very expensive and if you're going to have it out in the garden, it just rots in no time at all. So I'll make something look pretty, I will film it and put it back in the bag. Now if you wanted it to stay looking nice, I would go over to Dollar Tree and get a bunch of the little green pebbles or white pebbles or the, the crushed glass they have. And for a couple dollars you can put something over the dirt and make it look pretty and it'll last for maybe two to four or five months and look good and then of course it needs to be redone. Uh, most of the stuff I you work with now are succulents out in the garden for the fairy gardens at least because if you use the uh, succulents the gardens themselves will look good for months and uh, I'm just using cuttings mostly now from plants I already have and when I find some new plants that are different or new than what I own I buy them for I have more variety in my garden and uh, succulents out here at least in Southern California are very very expensive uh, for a small cutting you're going to spend anywhere from two to five dollars and a nice plant's going to run you about um, ten to twenty dollars but I'm going to be honest with you, I'm almost thinking it's better to go ahead and spend the 10 or 20 to get a really nice plant because they're already mature and you can get cuttings in the first year. And a lot of times when I'm looking at something, I look at how many different cuttings I can take and make more plants. And if you look at it that way, it's cheaper to buy the bigger ones. So um, usually I buy the bigger plants and I have several friends that have grow succulents like me and they give me cuttings off their plants and that's another reason why I have so many. I have a big variety but I'm always looking for something new and different that I don't own or have and um, all the big garden shows have been shut down here for the last couple of years because of COVID and since this is taking off so bad right now I I have no idea if we're going to have garden shows again this year. This may be the third year without a garden show to go to. And there are limits to what you can find in the regular nurseries here. They have stuff, but the stuff they have, I already own and have. And I'm looking for things that are different, things that I don't have. So that's another issue. Well, let's go see if we can put a fairy garden together today. Uh, I do love my little gardens, and we have, starting out a new year, and I probably have at least 100 fairy gardens that need to be cleaned out, replanted, and I'm going to... Um, throw out some flower seeds in some of them to have some color because I'm not going to keep buying plants uh, they're just too doggone expensive and it's just too hard because I have too big a yard to be buying that many plants every year so most of what I, I'm going to buy some new plants every year I always do but I'm going to be growing a lot of my flowers from seeds this year and uh, I'm going to be spending a lot more money on buying really sort of mature plants not too small because I'm tired of wasting my money on them too so let's see what else we can do these are my Mackenzie child uh, mushrooms I have three of them and uh, I have three more that my daughter has got in now I ordered three more so I have three more so now I can have a pair of each and that'll make it easier to decorate with and making different displays up and of course, these are my two cute little fairies that my friend Emily gave me. Yes, she gave them to me. Isn't that sweet of her? And they're as cute as can be. I wanted to show you their sweet little faces. Don't they look cute? And you're better off to spend a little more money on your fairies also and try to get some really nice quality faces. Um, and you can find some pretty good ones in the secondhand store if you really look a lot. Uh, they don't have a lot of them, so when you see them, you better grab them. But I love miniatures and if I find something that's in good condition in the secondhand stores I always buy them too. Uh, I have a lot of fairies that uh, don't photograph well and you can't always tell when you see them what photographs well and what doesn't. Now these little girls faces are photographing really nice and they're really good quality fairies. I honestly think I should be taking pictures of them in the store before I buy them because I've been very disappointed with fairies. Don't fo some of them don't photograph well. I don't know why exactly, if there's, the skin color is too light 
or they don't have enough shading on them or what but as you can see these fairies are small but they're photographing very nicely you can see their little faces their little mouths and their little hands or in arms necks everything about them are shaded very nicely and you need to look for those kind of things if you're into fairies that you can photograph like I am Sometimes I've had my girlfriend get me to find one at a second hand store. I had one that was damaged when she got it and I was shocked how pretty she photographed. When you see her, she doesn't look like she should photograph well at all. But she photographed so well, I used to take a lot of pictures of her. But it's been so long, I have no idea what kind of condition she's in now. The trouble was I used to keep these fairies out in the garden and when you do that, that also messes them up too. Uh, I need to get in the habit if they're good quality fairies. Like these aren't going to stay out in the garden because they're too nice. My Dollar Tree fairies and gnomes, I don't really care. No, most of them are not painted all that great. They look fine for a little photo op. But if you really want to come in close like I am on these fairies, they would look terrible. But these fairies look very nice even close up. And they aren't very big. They're pretty tiny and I'm pretty close to them. But they're good quality fairies. So... Make sure you look for good quality fairies when you're purchasing them. You're probably going to pay an extra three, four dollars for them. But sometimes I've gotten some beautiful fairies at the secondhand store. So I'm not going to say that you can't find them because I have bought them. And you still are going to pay seven to maybe ten dollars there, but they're probably twenty dollar fairies. They're very, very nice quality. I had some fairies I bought, I guess, probably four or five years ago, not recent. And um, I paid like $25 for them, second hand, at a second hand store. And I, that's a lot of money, but I really do like them. But they photograph beautifully. And I found the same kind of fairy in another store down by the beach. They were $130 a piece. So I did get a good deal. So look for those. You might find them. You might actually, maybe they don't realize how expensive the fairies are or that's what a second hand fairy costs you. When it's 130, you pay like 25 for it or 20. But anyway, I did buy, uh, I think I bought two of them. And uh, that was still like $50. That was a lot of money for two fairies. But I, if you go back on my channel, you'll see them. Uh, they're both Christmas fairies and gnomes. So um, I probably should have pulled them out at Christmas time this year. But uh, we have a lot of things we'll be sharing next year with you. I have lots of stuff that I haven't even taking out of the box for a year or two and we need to start doing more of that because this coming year is going to be repurposing reusing as you can see there is nothing new on this and i'm going to make at least one or two fairy gardens just to show you you can do different things and i'll come back to these same fairy gardens in probably a, a month or two and take some more pictures and put some other things in them for accessories to show you that because i have one of them that's just got tons and tons of babies coming up and right now, you can't see them really. They're just barely there. But in another month or two, they're going to be have beautiful flowers in them. So I'm going to come back and reshoot one of those videos. This plant here was already in this container. And this one over here was also. This one here, and this one here, and these back here were cuttings off another plant so I have five of these are cuttings this was a cutting also and so that's where all the plants came from so zero cost on the plants of moss here is something I've already had and reused multiple times so that wasn't new either separated all the moss very carefully and going to now put it in here to fill up for you're not going to see any of the dirt at all when I'm done now you can see all the moss has been cut, covered all the dirt and I tucked it in here and I think it looks pretty good. What do you think? Now we're going to continue. I put these in and they're like little baby succulent plants. These need to lay right on the damp soil and eventually they will root. And I will show you that in maybe another three or four weeks when they do. But I just wanted to show you why I'm using them in this, just to have a little more color and interest in this fairy garden. I place my three Mackenzie Child mushrooms scattered about this small container 
made sure I had them propped where they're not going to fall over and break. Now these are not going to stay outside. They are just in here for display purpose only for photos. They are definitely going back in the house, so don't panic when you see this and think that we're leaving them out here because we're not. Here we are, we're all done. What do you think? We got the mushrooms in, we got the fairies in, got the moss in, and gave a lot of contrast and color. Please leave me a comment and let me know what you thought.